Welcome to the podcast Friday Feels, brought to you by the Office of Counseling and Wellness at Berkeley College. I'm your host and personal counselor, Sarah Nickerson. Join our journey with Berkeley students as they navigate the challenges of the current pandemic with strength, creativity, and wisdom. New episodes released every Friday. Thanks for listening. So welcome, Marcy, to Friday Feels. I'm so glad to have you on here today. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm actually um, glad it's Friday, but uh, still feeling pretty good, even though with everything going on, it's uh, been trying at times. But, you know, I try and stay positive because I have a 12-year-old son. So uh, yeah. definitely try and keep it, you know, um, light and you know, kind of uh, keep things when I get a little down, kind of on the down low so that he doesn't Mm. see it too much. Yeah, it must be so hard during the pandemic to have a kid at home and with everything going on. I can imagine that must be really difficult at times. Yeah, you know, I have to say I'm very lucky. Um, Vincent is very uh, even keeled kid. So um, he's Actually, it's actually been a, a, a fun experience, especially, you know, being his age and to be home and be able to explain and talk to him about everything and get yeah. point of view. And, you know, if he kind of sees things, try and let him see the, you know, maybe the other side of it. And mm. so that's, that's been, you know, that's been actually, I think, good for both of us. Yeah, that's that's good. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Anything you want to share, we'd love to hear. Okay. Um, well, I'll be 53 in March. Woo! Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a woo, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I've been married. It'll be... Uh, it just was 24 years in June. Um I decided to return back to school to Berkeley uh, to change careers. Um, I've been an account. I was an accountant for 30 years. Wow. Actually, 1990, so 30 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, and um, probably should have got out a little earlier. The job I was at was actually different accounting because it was financial aid accounting, so it was a little different. Um, and that's kind of made it more interesting than, you know, the regular, you know, side of it. And so now, you know, I decided to make a career change, something which had more flexibility and something that I kind of found myself getting interested in by watching a lot of um, the medical things uh, on, uh, on Fios 161, like watching, uh, you know, um, life in the ER or, you know, or uh, uh, ER stories told by the, you know, the doctors that they don't need to talk about or, you know. Yeah. And um, I actually got interested and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to go back to school online since, I, since I'm home anyway. And I haven't been able to find a job. And since I want to keep Vincent safe and my family safe, I have just been home. And I said, you know what, why not? I said, it's, it's the time to do it, you know. Yeah. How has that been for you doing like the online courses? You know, truthfully, from being online so much for work and the last 10 years, actually the last like eight years, having a laptop to work and, um, you know, working on that, um, it actually hasn't been too bad. The only thing I will say is a little bit sometimes um, reading online, uh, you know, for a long period of time, I kind of find myself having to take, you know, breaks a little bit, um, you know, just because of, of, you know, the constant staring at the screen and that kind of thing. But um, for the most part, it's been very good. I've enjoyed actually doing it um, because it gives me flexibility with my schedule and with being home with Vincent and his schedule. So it actually works out really well. Okay, that's great. Well, what for you has been the hardest part of the pandemic and what has been like a unforeseen really good part of the pandemic? Um, I would say the hardest part of the pandemic is unfortunately staying 
Um, essentially seeing some of the people, and I'm just going to use people as the word, um, just, just looking at where our country is and, and the, uh, kind of, I don't want to say selfishness, but I mm. guess just so, um, people are so insecure with they're using their rights or their freedom or this or that in the name of other people. And I kind of, I really, I don't know, maybe I was naive for a long time, but I really thought that, you know, in this situation, and I think in this situation, there has been a lot of coming together um, with people and helping people and reaching out for people and, and, you know, doing good things. But I also think that it's just, um, it's just really shown where our country is right now. And um, it it kind of made me really see uh, what's important, you know, and, and the little things and not to sweat the little stuff anymore. And, um, you know, if I'm online 15 minutes longer somewhere or if I'm, you know, in the doctor's office 15 minutes longer, you know, or somebody snooty at a time or, you know, snippy. I think, I think everybody, you know, people have to deal with things and, you know, we can't all just deal with them the way we want to, you know, right. and I think, right. I think you never, I've always just stepped back now and kind of said, you know what, I don't really know what's going on with that person. And I don't know what's going on in their life. Then yeah. Why yeah. that person, you know, mm. so that's been the, that's been what I've kind of like the downside of it is kind of just seeing and making me realize what I want to show Vincent. And I think the best part is being, being home with him, especially at like a preteen age and having him, uh, first of all, get his side of his view of, of this situation, um, mm. teaching him about, you know, not always putting yourself first and sometimes making a sacrifice for others. Um, and truthfully, just getting to spend time with him and uh, be able to um, guide him through this, you know, without working right now and, you know, and showing him that also that, like I could go back to school and, you know, you can change things and you can, but you have to, you know, put in the effort and you have to make the decision too and you to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. I think like there's so much tension and anxiety and fear and it, it can sometimes bring out the worst in people. And it's really hard to maintain that level of generous assumption, right? Like, just like you're saying of just offering generous assumptions to people like we don't know what's going on with them we don't know what's happening and trying to stay as like selfless and centered in the moment that's it's a really really hard thing to do what do you feel like helps helps you to stay in that place i just think the way the way my parents raised us and the way my parents um were at home i mean they always welcomed people of all different races, uh, religions, nationalities, it didn't matter. Um, and they always were there to help people. You know, so many people and my dad's side of the family would come to them and say, Faye and Pat, can you help me? And, you know, and, and they always had an open door and they always wanted to be able to, like we always talked about things, you know, in our house, whether it was politics or whether it was, um, you know, and I think I think that my mom always taught us, you know, three basic lessons. She always said, um, "You're the center of my world, but you're not the center of the world." Mm. Um, you are. Uh, remember to always treat people the way you want to be treated, and that there's always going to be people with more than you, and there's always going to be people with less than you. And the other thing she always was, she was, she was sometimes brutally honest. And sometimes that could be good. And sometimes that could really like test your kind of, um, uh, you know, self, you know, your ego and yourself, you know, yourself. Yeah. Um, and, but truthfully, I think that made um, us, especially my sister and I and my brother, 
we just we were the same way you know we just mm. um we just you know a friend of mine could call who I haven't talked to in probably five years and if they really needed somebody to talk to I wouldn't sit there and say oh you haven't talked to me in five years I'm not going to talk to you you know what I mean I, I just that's just not like how I am you know yeah, and yeah. Um, and I think that's really helped because um you know my parents were generous and um so I was taught to be generous you know or to think of others you know and yeah, I, I yeah. this just it just makes a difference I think um you know in in especially the situation we're all in yeah yeah I think that that is like such a special gift to be able to allow people the space um, for you to listen, right? Like I, th I think especially in the pandemic, the greatest gift that we can give other people is just the gift of our presence of like yeah. offering ourselves and whether that's listening or helping or um, just being there for somebody else. I think that's, that's one of the best things that we can do, especially with limited resources and and not being able to see people in, in person sometimes. And it sounds like you've really made that a huge part of your own life. Yeah, I, I actually have, you know, um, we've, we've done the best we could with, um, you know, still seeing family. Um, but my family and I, we do the, when we're together, when we go to see each other, we're outside, we do the six feet apart. Um, we all wear masks. Um, we all make sure, you know, like my son washes his hands. I wash my hands. If we touch something, go wash your hands. You know, um, we definitely, we're definitely conscious. You know, my sister and my brother-in-law are in their early 60s. And my niece just had a baby girl. Um, and I just would, I, I don't think I could do it myself. Or even the fact that I was not responsible to think of their health um, and do the things, you know, to enable us to still see each other and, you know, interact with each other during these times. And it, and it's important. I mean, you need you need you need interaction with people, whether it's yeah. you know the mailman saying good morning or yeah. you know seeing your neighbor and just saying good morning. You you know we're yeah. human. We need that human interaction. Right. Yeah, and we need we need to be able to make that connection. Like we're not meant to to be alone or to sort through things on our own. Um, exactly. I, I, exactly. I love that. I love that. Well, my last question for you will be: If you had to give any advice, encouragement, or support to other Berkeley students, what would it be? Um, I would say to um, anything that you're unsure about. Uh, you know, don't don't hesitate to reach out to um, someone at the school, um, whether it's, you know, whether you have a question on, you know, a, a simple question, even about like your course. I mean, I've reached out to the support desk. I've reached out to my academic advisor. Mm -hmm. um, I've reached out to, um, I had a fellow student who I've never met. Um, send me an email and just say, oh, I, you know, I saw that you were able to work on this. How did you get to this? And, you know, we're, we're all there for the same reason. And this comes in with like the pandemic is that the more we make ourselves available and, and ask questions and don't, don't not use resources available to us, um, more, we work together the more we grow and then we can help others and it's it's one big you know one big step you know and um i definitely felt welcome at berkeley and i definitely um am enjoying you know the experience even though i'm online if there's still a lot of interaction with online with discussions for our courses and so forth so um definitely feel you know, connected to the school, even though I'm not mm, That's good. I love that. Yeah, I think I always tell people, like, don't be afraid to ask for help because that, one, we all need help, right? We all need a little bit of help. And two, like, especially at Berkeley, there are so many people that are around that are willing to help you. And so taking advantage of those resources and making sure that you're staying connected to both staff and also your fellow students. Like, I love that that student just randomly emailed you. That's amazing. 
Um, yep. So I think that's really wonderful, great advice. Yeah, and I, I was, I, you know, was glad that um, I, I, you know, gave them the steps that I followed, and I, you know, said, please let me know if that helped you or, you know, it worked. And they got back to me and they said, oh, it did. I was able to get in, so thank you. And you know, for me, not, you know, not physically meeting the person. Or I didn't sit there and say, oh, I don't know this person. Like, why are they reaching out for me? I just, you know, all world students there, you know, and even, even, you know, even people in all the offices, you know, their job there is to help you and guide you. So use them, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, well, Marcy, I'm so glad that you were able to be here today. I thank you for taking the time and for just being willing to share your wisdom and I'm so excited that oh, I don't you know are... about wisdom. <laughs> oh, it's definitely wisdom. And I'm excited to see what happens for you as you continue on in your own journey and continue to, you know, impact the world around you with your kindness and uh, just your support. So I'm really grateful that you are here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me and reaching out to me. I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, I could shed some light from a uh, different perspective of most of the students in you know, school now. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your rainy Monday. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, yeah. it's actually cool. I mean, it's nice. It's actually nice to end the week just kind of, you know, taking a breath and not yeah. having to worry about running out somewhere or, or you know, it's kind yeah. of nice to, to have a rainy day sometimes, you know. For sure. Well, enjoy it and take care. Thank you. You too, Sarah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That's all for now. Join us next week for another episode of Friday Feels. Enjoy your weekend and stay safe. Be well.